guys, welcome to the channel. If you are new here, you have landed on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take secondhand finds and share with you the process of what I do with these items. So in today's video, I'm sharing some cheese boxes. Do y'all see cheese boxes? Those big round boxes, sometimes they have the lid, sometimes they don't have the lid, they're wooden. They're newer wood, they're aged wood, the people store stuff in them, but I want to... <laughs> Hold on, I have to throw my ball for my cat. <laughs> I want to share with you today of how to style them into your home decor, what to do with them. When you see them, um, like that patina of that wood a lot of times is just absolutely gorgeous. Or if you see them in the thrift store a lot, um, they might be newer ones. So in today's video, I'm sharing with you what to do with those cheese boxes. And I'm sure that they probably held other things, but I don't know. That was always my guesstimate that these were large cheese boxes. Look at this beautiful one. It still has the lid. Um, it's got a metal ring on it. It's got a lot of little chippy wood that's kind of splintery. So we're, we're going to work with that. Um, so somebody does not get hurt or gets a splinter. Those are no fun. So I'm going to start off with first seeing if I can just take some hot glue and just glue that big gap together just to make it a little bit more sound and then hopefully so that like, you know, dust and whatnot may not, <laughs> may not go in there. I don't know if I'm going to completely get it, but there's, it's, quite a large gap in some of the areas. So we're just gonna go ahead and fix that and look at that splintery one. Well, we'll work with that in a minute. Before I start gluing anything together, I'm just gonna take some sandpaper and I'm just gonna run it around the edges, trying to get like the smaller little splintery pieces off. I probably have to clip off the bigger pieces. I'm not going to attempt to try to glue like little, we want this to look like a salvaged vine. So if it's a little bit on the brokenness side, so be it. But safer, I feel, I feel would be a little bit better. So yeah, just taking that 80 grit sandpaper that has been well loved already. I use a lot of my sandpaper that I had used on my orbital sander to like hand sand things. So it's not necessarily like the 80 grit, the really strong grit, but that'll just knock down those little slivers that are sticking out and I can really assess how much of the gaps I can get closed. So I'm just going to use some hot glue, nothing fancy. I'm not going to tight bond glue it and clamp it and all that. It, I just want it not to be such a gap. I will have to hold it for quite a few seconds to get it to cool down and then hold the two pieces together. But I feel like it's worth it. It may not be worth it to everybody, but I feel like, you know, if I can get some of this closed, it would be a little bit better. So many of you have probably already seen this project, but a lot of times I am doing multiple projects here on the channel. So if I know I am, and I will mix up a generous amount of paint. So I'd already done these little candlestick writers in a previous video, so I hope that you've already seen that. If not, hop over and check it out but I'm using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in the Flower Sack. I'm just looking for an old timey salvage look and I'd like, I really like the milk paint because I really can achieve that look. So it's equal parts powder to equal parts water. You stir it for two minutes, let it sit off to the side until it thickens. Since I sanded this, I just dusted it off, used the air compressor to make sure all the sanding dust off, off camera. There's really not, a lot of cleaning to this it's a it's pretty clean and all I'm going to do by getting it wet is just get it wet <laughs> and it's going to soak in and swell that wood back up so I don't really want that to happen but I'm only going to just brush on one generous coat of this paint so I'm not looking for complete coverage whatever gets on gets on I'm trying to blend it in as I said before we're looking for an old time salvaged look
that I got my one coat on and I said I was not looking for coverage by any means. I know it's hard to envision, but it'll be okay. So now I'm just taking that same sandpaper and I'm running it over, making sure that everything is nice and smooth. I, it, when you wet wood like this, especially this type of wood, it really raises the, the grain of the wood and you can feel it, but I want it to feel aged. I want it to feel nice and smooth. So sanding it will do that job. I might distress it a little bit more around the edges, but that's really what I'm going for, just a nice smooth finish. And I'm sure many of you noticed that when I was painting over the box, there was numbers on there. So I want to put a number back on and I'm just going to freehand it, something I very seldom do. So let's see how it goes. So I think I can freehand the number eight. I'm just using some coal black paint from Painted Heirloom on the Fusion paint line. And I'm just... I'm just gonna go for it. A lot of times like numbers like this would have just been drawn on, hand, hand written on. So that's what I'm going for, that really authentic kind of vintage look. probably seems silly just to put it on just to take it right back off but that is m way too new looking and we need to match up with the age of the paint job that I put on there so just back back to that sandpaper I go especially where like the wood crease lines are where it would have been worn off with time that's where I'm really trying to hit now I would like to wax this to seal in that milk paint protect it and then I'm going to add some of the fusions aging wax also to give it a little bit of dirt, a little bit of element look there. So I'm going to just wipe some of that on. And then I'm going to take the Homestead Wax, which is the clear natural wax. <laughs> and if you're ever looking for a tub of it, just email Vonda at the Painted Heirloom. She can hook you up. It's only a special order type of thing. But I go through a lot of clear wax, so it's well worth the investment. But yes, and we're just dirtying this up a little bit. My idea for this was to use it as a tray. How unique is that? A collection, a place to collect all your collections, your beautiful home decor, something that you can use time and time again to display your items. So to give you some ideas, I have some old spool thread spools. Love these, collect them all the time. Can't pass them up. Different shapes, sizes, and all that whatnot and I like the cream with that aged white it's beautiful then we have a pair of scissors which is perfect I love the handle on those scissors they're so industrial vibe kind of going on there and you got all this farmhouse kind of decor all these trends that people like to give them a name I, I just do things because I like it <laughs> but now I need I, I know I am going to need a riser and so this is just something in my collection of a a pulley that's lost its metal part so it's the inside of a pulley which is a perfect for a riser and then if you're a regular of my channel you know that I I have a love of collecting of old vintage black leather Bibles so this is a great piece not only to read and to worship with but to add into a place so that you can visually see them and enjoy them all the time which then of course the black matches the handle of the scissors which matches the eight that I painted on the front of the box so then we're going to add this little teapot this ironstone teapot that did not have a lid when I bought it it did not have a lid but I never care I like those broken down items that never bothers me at all so I'm going to add some of the Hobby Lobby fake 
um, <laughs> baby, baby's breath. There's the word I was looking for. I was going to call it baby's grass. It's not grass. It's, it's a flower. So I love these. It is, it just matches. Look at how well it matches that cream and it goes with the ironstone and the salvaged chippy white paint. Just gorgeous. And of course I always have to at least drop one <laughs> or two, but that is just tying that all together. Then I have one of my home, um, 1803 candles which the black of the lid you know we're tying this all together and if you used it on a coffee table or a table of course you'd like to write a, like to light a candle but then I remembered I'm like hey yeah I wanted to add this eight in there you know how you're doing your decor and you're decorating everything up and then you remember hey I had this piece well I had this piece of wooden eight probably was off somebody's numbers of their house because there's a little hole in it though the white I don't think you'll see it very well in that little vignette that I created so I want to go ahead and paint it black but it is super shiny paint so if I went to paint this black first I don't think it'd stay on so well so I'm going to go ahead and get it sanded So I'll just get it dusted off and then I'm going to use that same fusion paint in the coal black. You got to love it because there's primer paint and top coat all in one. So you're good to go after you get it painted. So yeah, I'm just, I'm going to paint both sides of it, even though when it was get against its first part of its life, what it was probably created for, they didn't paint the backside, but just in case the way that I'm going to display it, I want both sides to be painted. So after it's dry, I'm just going to take that sandpaper <laughs> and look how it left the number eight um, and distress the piece. Just sanding off. I want it. Yeah, I don't want it to look freshly painted when everything else is that perfectly imperfect that's in that little vignette. I really did have a reasoning for um, painting on that number eight and see how that just that's what it needed that in front of that teapot just needed a little bit more of a black color to tie all that in together. So now this is my next one that I will be doing for you. I'm going to set the lids off to the side. I will do a different project with those when the inspiration hits me for right now. It's just the bottom. And no, the lids don't fit on the bottom of these boxes to keep them together. That's just how it's going to go. But I absolutely loved this box when I saw this at an auction. We do a lot of auctions. If you want to check out our auction hauls, check out the Journey channel. Ginger Chick the Journey. It's down in the description below where I share hauls. But anyway, I absolutely love this box. The patina, the color, everything about it other than the dirt. So I'm just going to first take the vacuum to it, get most of the debris out. A lot of times these older boxes, just like your wooden boxes, they were you people use them. They use them for storage a lot. They use them for storage in the barns, nails whatnot odds and ends so as an auction goer i that's where i find them they're not just pretty decor pieces on somebody's shelf they're usually kind of dirty pieces <laughs> dirty pieces that somebody is just happy to make a buck or two off of so unlike the first box that probably was kept in somebody's house this one was kept in the barn so i have a lot of picking to do i'm trying to get out any any whatnot unmentionables that might be in the crackage area the picking tool from the dollar tree store helps out really well with that i just want to make sure this is nice and clean so this box is not going to be one of those that i can just like paint over because i don't want to paint it over because the color is amazing there yeah we can try to reproduce that all we want with stains and waxes but it's, it's pretty beautiful so i'm just going to clean it up to the best of my ability then as I'm getting it cleaned, I have some repair to do. Not like major repair. It The nails have kind of wiggled their way out. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap them back in and make try to make them that they're nice and flush. And then next I'm going to take that sandpaper that I used earlier. And I'm going to make sure that nobody's going to get any slivers. So just trying to sand down any of those spots that are really rough and where the wood has just just started to split. 
So I'm hoping that this doesn't change the patina too awful much, but no, it, there's, there's, yeah, there's something <laughs> there. There are something here and there on this box that, um, has to be wiped off. So I'm just using a wet wipe to wipe it off. I don't want like a sopping rag of water because I don't want it to like absorb and swell with too much liquid. So I'll just do my best using some wet wipes to wipe it down and get any of those unmentionables. I, like I said, I know I bought this one in the in a barn and they had animals. I don't know. It, it is what it is. It's definitely <laughs> flipping items isn't always for anybody that may be a little bit squeamish. That's for sure. Now, by doing that, I could really feel the grain got raised. It There's some grabbiness like dust. If you went to dust it off, the, your rag would catch on it. So there again, I'm still trying not to change the patina because it's gorgeous. So I'm just using some 4-0, fine, the finest steel wool that you can get just to rub it ever so slightly to take that texture down. It should not change the patina by any means, but I'm my goal is here is to have a nice clean item with patina still. <laughs> that yeah, That's what we're calling it. So now that we have this beautiful box, it is beautiful. And you can see that handwritten number on there again. Love it. I'm going to leave that as is. Love those rusty nails. But I do want to add a little bit of wordage. Just something to draw your eye to this box. And I like it is. It's an old picture that came in some auction lot. Random picture. Um, but I like the wording on the back. That's... The advertising on the back is what attracted me. So I'm just, I am, I know. I'm going to hot glue this on like a label. Is it not just gorgeous? Now we're going to start filling it up. And so I'm going to share my thought process, some of the decor I might put in this if it was in my own home. So we're going to start off with, I have some candles. They're Hobby Lobby candles and they're already white. There's no reason to paint them over. They're beautiful. They were on a Christmas clearance. Um, and I like, I like that they're not too terribly tall. So I absolutely love the white pop with that aged patina wood with the cream labeling. And so now I have these sheep. These are just resin sheep, but I, the, I've had them in my stash for a while and they just look dirty. I know that sheep do get dirty, but I just really want to whiten them up. So I'm just going to use some of the Fusions parchment white to paint, repaint these little guys.
Now before I'm going to go ahead and add those in, I'm going to do a pop of greenery. I really, there's another color there that with the white and the brown and then this very bright green. Um, <laughs> I, this is a type of baby grass, I think also, but it's just a different hue of the color. I'm going to cut the stems off. I don't want you seeing the stems, so I'm going to take them down as far as I can without cutting all the little stems off themselves. That's just, that's just something I do. So I, I wasn't really sure how many it was going to take, so I just grabbed a bunch of them. I think three is plenty. Now we're going to go ahead and I did stick a riser in there just an old piece of wood round and I know that the laying down sheep isn't necessarily as tall as some people would want it to be but I envision this like on a coffee table or a table and something that you're looking down into those whites match up perfectly who would have thought anyway but I'm going to add a couple battery operated candles some grungy ones and then just for a little bit more of an accent I think I can just wrap a couple little pieces of lace around the candles just to kind of give it that feel like it looks good but it just needed a little bit more Okay, now this one isn't a cheese box and at first I was going to make it like table decor but I just couldn't do it because I don't think you'd see its beauty as much now this to this is like the old style like shaker containers but this one is actually MDF board so it's a newer reproduction one which I didn't know they made those. I guess they make everything reproduction, don't they? <laughs> so, but the wire, I, I wanted you to be able to see it. So if it was just on a table, I don't know. And you put decor and I don't think you'd see it as much. But yes, I got I got a little bit, oh, of course, you know, secondhand pre-loved items. They always need a little bit, of, a, little, a little bit, a lot of loving sometimes to get them cleaned up. And so I want to make it look like it's not quite as new as it really is by just sanding it and giving it some distress and giving it some age like it's been used. Then I want to add a little bit of patina, a little bit more age to this piece. This aging wax is becoming one of my favorites that I get from the painted heirloom. It just has like that right amount of black and brown and dirt. <laughs> the dirt look that I'm going for because when I as the item ages, it gets touched, it gets elements on it. And yeah, that's what it is. It's an aging wax. So it's just deepening up that paint, that green paint. It's getting into the... I want to say wood, but it's MDF board. And then just, yeah, see how it's just, it's just giving it that age. When something's already as pretty as this is, you don't want something that's going to take away from it. Now, I just have this simple sack. I have a couple of these that I thrifted from a garage sale this summer because I actually was going to make one. And I'm like, I already have 
one of them, which would be really simple to make. But anyway, I just want to add this in here with a little bit of lettering, a little bit of flowers, just something to emphasize this. So I'm just randomly grabbing some numbers from this one is the leather letter press stamps from IOD, which I also get all my IOD products from Painted Heirloom. Also, if you are looking, this is a great stamp set to have because it has multiple different sizes of letters and numbers and it has that little dot period that you're always looking for. So I'm going as the numbering just like an older date. So I just grab it with some packing tape and then I fold over the two sides of the packing tape making little handles. And then there's still enough sticky on there that I can stick it to the item or stick it down so that when I'm stamping it doesn't move. It, and then I do have my stamping grid, my grid that's underneath me and I, after I have it all taped up, I'll put it on the line of the grid pattern to make sure that I'm like everybody's running in a nice level order. And then I'm just going to use some of the IOD's permanent black ink to stamp up the, these numbers. And then I think these, the same baby's breath florals from Hobby Lobby, I buy them by the dozens <laughs> when I'm at Hobby Lobby, especially when they're on their, their floral sale, because I, there's not a ton on a stem itself, but once you separate them off, I have used them in so many projects. They just go with the, the colors that I like to paint. So I'm just going to clip them off. I'll probably have to clip them off like down a little bit more but I'm just trying to get them off the original stem first. You know how that is you kind of have to test it out see how it looks. I do think some of the stems are too long um, but I just really wanted to see how it was going to look before I attached it into the sifter itself. You know it's all about playing and figuring out what your eye really loves. So I do that color of that there's something about that color of that baby's breath and that they didn't make the stem so brown or so green. It's just the perfect age hue. I hope they do not change it because I just think it is a classic and I hope they leave it alone. So to attach it, I'm just going to do hot glue. I'm just going to do a line of hot glue on the top, a line of hot glue on the bottom, and then just, I, I try not to overdo it. I'm just trying to like, push it down a little bit so you have a place for your florals to be at the top and I'm, I kind of use the grid pattern that was underneath me. I use my grid Cricut mat, the grid pattern a lot. It may just look like it's a place that I'm getting paint on but I really do use it a lot for measurements <laughs> too. So yeah so just a bead of glue and then just I'm I'm not going to mess with the back side of it because it's going to be hanging on the wall or hanging on something. So you have to attach it somehow. But as I started to add the stems in, I really felt like, you know what? I think I need to puff up my sack a little bit. I think it's like where you'll be able to see the stems through that thin material if I don't. So I'm just going to take some of this batting and get it stuffed in.
again, thank you so much for watching today's video. As always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you've checked it, checking out this channel for the first time and you like this kind of content, please smash that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And if you like how I styled my hutch behind me or any home decor tips or just seeing the behind the scenes of a YouTuber's life, we, I also have a second channel called Ginger Chick of the Journey if you want to pop over to that and see what that's all about. Again, thanks for watching. We will see you next time and you can see what we're up to. Bye! Bye.